Hello, welcome back to the Bald Book Geek. I'm your host of this weird little thing on the internet. I did a video on the X-Files called Believe, which it basically was an overview of the original series of the X-Files and its um, reunion. This video is about its spin-offs. So when we start with the X-Files, the universe is big. There have been two films, which I mentioned in that video, but also two series spin-offs, and something I'm going to say for the end of the video that's quite special. So, strap in, guys. I think you're going to enjoy this. And in the words of Fox Mulder, I want to believe. So the first spin-off is The Lone Gunman. The Lone Gunman were a group of people, main characters, from The X-Files. They had some episodes focused to them. They were contacts of Mulders that dealt with the spooky side of things. The Lone Gunman were a great team, great comic relief, but also very serious and dark. It ran for a one-off series, and you can get this series on DVD quite regularly. Sadly, it's not. I don't think it's on any streaming service, and it doesn't seem to be remastered yet. The Lone Gunman follows these three main characters on their adventures, dealing with what's going on, and kind of delving into more mythology, and their own little mythology as well. They also predicted 9-11, which is kind of terrifying. <laughs> the Lone Gunman was well written, very funny, but also very dark, and I'm so glad that this show existed. I've watched it through many times, and oddly, I only found out about it later, after its initial run, because for some reason, I, couldn't, I can't remember it being on UK television. I own the DVD, and the extras on the DVDs are also very good and worth watching. There's not many episodes, but it's, I think it's like 12, and that's perfect. It's a great series, and they gave them kind of a, a season final to tie up all the loose ends in an episode of The X-Files, which I thought was brilliantly done. These characters are so important to The X-Files mythos that they've always kept, you know, their, their presence is there in some way. Even in the reunion after the characters were killed, they come back in some way, even if it's a little cameo or, or on a phone. Spoiler, sweetie. It's a great little nod to them. The series was great. It was interesting. It's a shame that it didn't last longer, but in a weird way, I'm glad it didn't because we get so much Lone Gunman stuff in the X-Files after. A phenomenal series and one that I think if you're an X-Files fan, you really need to watch at some point. The Lone Gunman, like I said, is available on DVD, although I'm not sure about streaming services, and I know it hasn't got a HD release yet, although you can get the DVD very cheaply. Millennium, the second spin-off from The X-Files. Millennium doesn't feature any main characters from The X-Files, other than a Mulder and Scully cameo in one of the early episodes. Although certain elements cross over, be it the Marlin cigarettes, or just little nods to The X-Files in some ways. Millennium focuses on the Millennium Group and deals with the more supernatural elements of the X-Files universe. Things that aren't quite covered sometimes in the main show. Millennium ran for a few seasons and they're good series. They're dark, they're brooding, they have their moments and they're well-rounded. There is a great episode of the X-Files called Millennium which is the series final and tied off, tied off most, not all, but most of the loose ends from the Millennium series. Millennium, again, was created by the same people, and it very much is the same universe show. It, there's a few meta moments, but I think that's out of necessity rather than actually being meta. It's The X-Files can be dark. This has a darker, more serious tone overall, which, again, is not a bad thing. Millennium definitely packs in those punches, and it's a show that I discovered after as well. I When I bought my original DVD box sets of the X-Files I discovered Millennium by chance and I've watched it at least three times completely through. It's a great series. Like all shows that are long, reasonably long running with a few seasons you always get some weaker episodes but there's nothing wrong with that. Millennium is brooding, interesting, deals with a side of the X-Files you don't really see or some of the mythology that's kind of pushed aside sometimes. It definitely packs its punches, it's well written, the camera work is great, and I love the fact that they gave it that little nod at the end. After the Millennium was cancelled, they 
the Chris Carter creates an episode of the X Files that tied off those loose ends, and I do feel like if you watch the episode Millennium, you you kind of feel a bit lost if you don't know about the Millennium series, so it's always worth watching or even trying to find. As far as I know, it's not on any streaming service in the UK. I have heard talk of it. Sadly, it's not got a HD release, but that's the nature of the beast, and it's worth tracking down. I have them on DVD, and you can get the DVDs very cheaply now anyway. Finally, the little surprise at the end. X-Files video games. There are two. One released for PC, Mac, and PlayStation 1 back towards the end of the 1990s, which was a point-and-click FMV game in which you play an agent who was looking for Mulder and Scully. You can treat it as almost a lost episode. It features actors from the show in full glory in video. It's a point-and-click. You solve clues. You talk to people. How you react to situations and people can affect what you do. It's four discs on the PlayStation 1 which I have to laugh at, although I do own it. It's an enjoyable game. If you like FMV games, it's definitely worth picking up, and you can think of it as a lost episode of The X-Files. You can also watch it on YouTube if you can't. You can get the PC Mac version to run on modern Windows PCs and modern Macs, with some tweaking and maybe an emulator or two, and that's also another way you can play it. It's definitely an interesting game. It's nice to have a lost episode, and it's nice to have that story arc of these characters, and seeing it from a different perspective. Definitely worth picking up, and even just worth watching a playthrough. The second game was for the PlayStation 2, Resist and Serve. This game is a survival horror, completely CGI, although most, if not all, of the actors come back. This takes place in, I think it takes place in Season 7, I should say. And it's a fun survival horror game. If Is it perfect? No. The camera angles and fixed viewpoints get a little bit old, but it's a nice horror. It's not Resident Evil. It's not perfect. But it is fun. And it's nice to have another story and hearing the actors reprising those roles, because that's, for, that's at one point what we thought we would get. It's easy to track down. It's on the PlayStation 2. Again, it's very cheap and easy to get your hands on. So... They're the X-Files video games. So, as always, I'm going to leave you here. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Have you seen any of the X-Files spin-offs? Tell me what you think. Bye.